Kellogg's Pep! The super delicious cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman! Faster than a speeding bullet! More powerful than a locomotive! Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Having defeated Superman in a titanic battle, Henry Miller, the Nazi atom man, discovered that the solution of kryptonite in his blood, which enabled him to generate atomic power within his own body, had been exhausted. Aware that a woman known as the Scarlet Widow had stolen the original kryptonite fragment, Miller contacted a sinister fat man named Sidney, who traced the widow to her hideout and demanded that she sell him her last remaining piece of the element. Meanwhile, Jimmy Olsen had been summoned to a small country hospital, where the unconscious Superman, his identity unknown, had been given only a few hours to live. But when Jimmy was led into the room in the hope that he could identify the dying man, Superman had disappeared. As we continue the next morning, Jimmy has returned to Metropolis and is in the office of Editor Perry White at the Daily Planet. Listen. And when I got into the room, Mr. White, the man, whoever he was, was gone. They looked all over the hospital for him and all through the grounds, but they couldn't find him. Well, like you said, he was unconscious, in a coma. Well, he was. They didn't expect him to live until morning. So how could he just get up and walk out of the hospital? Well, he couldn't. Somebody must have carried him out. Oh, but they couldn't, though, without being seen. The head nurse's desk is right near the door, and somebody was on duty there all the time. Well, maybe they took him out through the window. Did anybody think of that? Well, sure, but the room is on the third floor. And the fire escape is at the other end of the building. Well, they still make ladders, don't they? Huh? Well, sure. Sure they do, but... But who'd go to all that trouble, and why? Henry Miller, of course. Or somebody working with him. They found out the fellow wasn't dead, and they were afraid he'd tell who tried to kill him. And maybe what Miller and Teufel were up to, so they took him away. Oh, the poor guy. Miller will certainly finish him this time. Gosh, when I think of those green sparks shooting out of his hand... Oh, well, stop with those green sparks. It was lightning you saw. Freak storm. No, it wasn't, Chief. I mean, Mr. White. Of course it was. Oh, boy, how I'd like to get my hands on that Miller. Palming himself off as an American war veteran. Getting me to give him a job, and all the time he was a dirty Nazi. What I don't understand is why he took me out to that beach cottage. I never did anything to him. Gosh, Mr. Ken and I thought he was a nice guy. Well, that reminds me. Ken fancies himself a great detective. Maybe he can find out what this is all about. Where is he? Hmm? Oh, I don't know. I called his apartment twice this morning. No answer. Yeah, and it's after ten o'clock. He's probably off on his own hook again. And if he is, he's through this time for good. I warned him. Well, he might have gone to see his doctor. He was sick yesterday morning, you know. Huh? Oh, yes, yes, I, I forgot. Well, he ought to be along soon, then. Incidentally, remind me to tell him that John Millicent wants him to call. He says it's very important. Want me to answer? I am still able to answer my own phone, thank you. Hello? Very wide speak. Oh, hello, Doc. Hello. No, no, I haven't forgotten, but Ken hasn't been in yet. Yes, I know he isn't at his apartment, and he'll probably be in soon. It's payday, and he usually condescends to drop in then. You sure I can't help you? I see. Well, all right, I'll make sure he calls you the moment he comes in. You're welcome. Goodbye. Millicent again. I wonder what he's so all-fired eager to get hold of Kent for. Oh, is that Dr. John Millicent, the big scientist? Yes. He says he must talk to Kent at once. I just remembered. Mr. Kent sent me over to his laboratory with something a few weeks ago. Eh? With what? Oh, I don't know what it was. It seemed to be just a sliver of green metal, but it burned when you held it in your hands. It was in a flower pot in the Scarlet Widow's apartment. I see. Now, of course, Kent wouldn't tell me about it. I'm only his editor. I'm not supposed to know what stories he's working on until he decides to take me into his confidence. I will... Oh, here's Mr. Ken now. Well, it's about time. What the... What's that outfit you've got on, Ken? Well, what's the idea of the overalls, Mr. Ken? Well, 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 why don't you answer? What are you standing there for? Come in. Yes, all right. Well, come on, explain yourself. Where have you been? And what in tarnation is the idea of dressing up in those dirty overalls? But... Oh, Ken, Ken, what's the matter? Grab him, Olsen. He's gone to fall. I... I... Oh, I've got him. Here, sit down in this chair, Mr. Ken. Gosh, what's the matter? What happened? I don't know. Since, since... You don't know? Olsen, get him a glass of water. Okay. Never mind. Wait, there's water here in my throat. What do you mean you don't know, Mr. Ken? Were you in an accident or something? Accident? Yes. No. Yes, no. Don't bother him yet. Don't bother him. Here. Here, Ken, drink this. Thanks. Do you feel any better now? Yeah, feels strange. Strange? Well, how do you mean? I'm weak. I'm tired. I've been walking. 
Walking. Walking? Walking where? I don't know. Just walking. I couldn't get myself up in the air. Huh? Hey, he's out of his mind. We've got to find out what happened to him. Now, come on, Kent. Try to pull yourself together. What happened to you? Where did you get those overalls? From a farmer. Farmer? What farmer? I met him on the road. He gave me a ride. He was a nice man. He, I had on pajamas. He, he gave me these overalls. You were on a road somewhere in your pajamas? Good Godfrey. Why? I don't know. I can't remember anything after fight. What? Oh, so that's it. He was in a fight and somebody beat his brains out. He ought to know better. He can't fight that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Couldn't have been in a fight. There isn't a mark on him. Well, that's right. Gosh, what is wrong with him, Chief? He's having a nervous breakdown, that's what. Lois was right. Superman should have left him in that rest home. Yes, Superman. What about Superman? Had to come here and tell you. Tell you. You have to tell us what? Adam Man. Adam Man? Yes. Miller. I must stop. Eh? Are you talking about Henry Miller? Yes. He's Adam Man. Box on his throat. Power. Uh, he's nutty as a squirrel. Olson, call up. I know what he means. He means Miller's the Adam Man. What? Now, look here, Olson. Don't you go crazy, too. That must be it. Those sparks shooting out of Miller's hands. And he was a Nazi, and he was with Teufel. And before Teufel escaped to Germany with the kryptonite, he said he was going to create a, uh, an Adam Man to destroy Superman. Well, that was why Mr. Kent was so worried. Don't you remember? Yes, I remember, all right. Kent wouldn't listen to me, and he worried himself into a nervous breakdown. An Adam Man destroying Superman. I've heard enough of that nonsense from Kent. Now, I don't want to hear any more of it from you. But I... I said stop it. Well, he's out of his mind, and now you want to drive me, Batty, too. But he just said Henry Miller was the Adam Man. Does he act like he knows what he's talking about? He must have seen a headline about Miller being on that beach with Teufel, and so now he thinks that Miller is an Adam Man. I... I'm going to take him to my own doctor right now, and then maybe I'll take him to Florida. I... If he listened to me, he'd gone there last week. There's a box on his throat. Yes, 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 yes. Sure, 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 sure. Now, come on, Kent. Up on your feet, boy. I... Now, you come with me, and I'll take care of you. All right. Uh, answer the phone, Olsen. And if it's for me, say I'm out. I don't know when I'll be back. Let Lois and Burroughs handle me. Okay. Uh, Mr. White's office. Jim Olson speaking. Uh, you come along, Kent. I'm here now, and you'll be all right. Oh, hello, Dr. Millison. Mr. Kent? Oh, no, he was in, but he just went out again. He's sick. He... Oh, but he couldn't call you, Dr. Millison. He... Do I know how to get in touch with Superman? Are you kidding? I mean, excuse me, of course I don't. Yes, I'll tell Mr. Kent as soon as I see him again. Okay, bye. Asking me if I can get in touch with Superman. Huh? Some people must think he works here or something. Replacing the phone, Jimmy Olsen looks anxiously after the dazed, staggering Clark Kent, who is being led away by Perry White. Why is Dr. Millison, the famous scientist who was unable to help Superman defend himself against the power of the kryptonite, now so eager to contact him? We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. But right now, here's a word from your announcer. You know, gang, that old phrase, as much fun as a barrel of monkeys, is kind of out of date. Nowadays, it's as much fun as a collection of comic buttons. Yes, sir, these new comic buttons that come in packages of Kellogg's Pep are a barrel of fun. There's a doggone smart looking in the first place, right on the beam. The full color pictures of your funny sheet favorites stand out like anything against the clear white background. Then, there's the kick that you get out of adding another button to your collection and swapping any duplicates with your friends. Thanks to the grand old Kellogg Company, it's easy as one, two, three to collect all 18 different buttons. All you do is to ask mom to get you a good supply of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. That's the only way you can get these nifty comic buttons. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. Just look inside the pet package, and there you are, one of these exciting new comic buttons or a military insignia or warplane button. Don't forget now, there's a prize for you in every package of P-E-P, Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now back to the adventures of Superman. <laughs> Shortly after the dazed Superman and his guise of Clark Kent was led from the Daily Planet by his anxious editor, Sidney, the sinister fat man, wedged himself into a phone booth in a drugstore and made a call. Hello, this is Sidney. Put him on the phone. Hello, this is Miller. Quiet, quiet. I know who you are. Oh, yeah, listen, did you get the... Mr. Stop it. Haven't you any sense? Of course I got it. Good, that's wonderful. Our party was cautious, so it took longer than I expected. But everything's arranged. Now pay attention. Don't interrupt. She don't knows where to take you. 
You'll uh, fix your hair and your clothes as he directs before you leave. Yeah. You understand? Yes. Where are we going? To... I said don't interrupt. You uh, have the uh, formula written down. Yes. We'll bring it with you. We'll find out if it works. I'll meet you. That's all. Uh-oh. Oh, that Extricating himself with difficulty from the phone booth, Sidney waddles through the crowded drugstore to the street, his moonlight face showing no sign of the greedy eagerness in his fat body. For in his overcoat pocket, wrapped in lead foil and clutched tightly in his pudgy hand, is a small piece of green glowing radioactive kryptonite, the deadly element which, when dissolved and injected into Henry Miller's blood, will transform him once more into an atomic monster, able to destroy anything in his path. What will happen? Will Miller's formula, which he says he received from his father, dissolve the kryptonite? And what of Superman escaping death by only a miracle, and now dazed and helpless? Fellows and girls, Monday's episode is tense and exciting, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station, for The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow The Adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC Publications.